Can you hear me all right? Take it off. I can hear you guys just fine. Okay, Told me to take good. my mask off. I better not get to COVID. I've avoided <laughs> it so far. So I've been tested. I don't know about these other guys. Now, I've been tested every <laughs> single day. I have nothing left in the interior of my nose. If, if you'd like to make a brief opening statement, you can, or we could just go straight to questions. Which would now you prefer? We go. I don't know. I wouldn't know what I'd say. All right. Fair enough. We're going to start off with Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Carrie. Uh, hey, Austin. Hey, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh, Appreciate that. Thank you. It, it seemed like a little bit of a scramble uh, at safety before the Big title game. Uh, we saw, you know, that, you know, Marcus was a game time decision. We didn't know about Ronnie until a little before kickoff. How much did that scramble the plans for you guys at safety? And I know there's a limit to what you'll say ahead of Friday, but, you know, how much how much closer to full strength do you think you guys will be there? Yeah, well, we were very – it was a big scramble. And we were – we had three healthy safeties, uh, you know, ready to play in the game. And so there was uh, – you know, that was that was significant. And the kids did a really nice job. That's that's the COVID environment, right, of, of uh, adapting and, and uh, overcoming and accommodating. And uh, uh, we, we would certainly like to be uh, much more – much closer to full strength uh, on Friday. Next question will come from Stephen Means with Cleveland.com. Hey, Hi, Stephen. How you doing? Great. All right. Um, when you look at Clemson and how they kind of use their wide receivers specifically, it mirrors a little bit to how you guys use Chris and Garrett, where it's an outside guy and a slot guy who get the majority of the touches. Um, when you guys do go good on good, how much does going against those two guys and the way that they use them maybe prepare you for what you're going to see on Friday? Oh, I think that, that that's a great question. I think every day that we get to go uh, good on good is a good day for us because those are some of the best wide receivers in the country uh, in our in our facility. And these guys that we're playing are just like them. And so the ability to compete uh, against a great skill uh, day in and day out is, is is critical when you're trying to get ready to play a team like this. We'll now go to Tim May with Letterman Row. Hi, Kerry. Uh, Merry Christmas again. Uh, by the Thank way, you. Uh, as, as you look at uh, Trevor Lawrence, what is the most outstanding thing he does? And I know that's like, you know, out of 20, whatever. But uh, what is the one thing that you think just sets him apart? Uh, you know, like Urban Meyer was telling me, you know, the thing that's really interesting is he's a great runner, but he's really fast, too. And you don't necessarily see both of those uh, – when you just watch it on video, but just what's your take? Yeah, to Urban's point, he's deceptively fast. And and you'll see when players have angles on him uh, and he outruns the angle. Uh, I, I think that the thing that he he does so many things very, very well. Um, you know, it's one of the – I would say it's arguably one of the great college football quarterbacks of all time based on his production and, and, and winning games. He, he is a play extender, and, and uh, he does a great job of avoiding rush, sidestepping rush, um, uh, getting outside the pocket, uh, running the ball, or, or extending the play and throwing the ball. And uh, he makes very, very, very few poor decisions. I think he does a great job with his pre-snap recognition. Uh, he's got a plan in mind when he catches the snap, but when the plan is altered, he does a great job of – of adapting to that. Next will be Bill Landis with The Athletic. Hi, Bill. Hey, Kerry, how are you? Great, thanks. Hey, um, th so this matchup is, is becoming more and more common on the field, but, but off the field as well. Um, you guys recruit against Clemson a lot, and I, I think that came, became a little more common maybe in the two years you weren't here, but certainly it's, it's ramped up now. Just what, what's it like recruiting, I guess, similar guys as Clemson? And, and you have a guy in this class that you just signed, Jordan Hancock, who was committed there. What was it like recruiting Jordan when he was committed to another program? Yeah, well, you know, we had recruited Jordan uh, very hard and, and had felt very good about him. And, and then uh, he made the decision to, uh, to commit to them. And, and I respected that. I respect that decision. Um, but we had, a, had developed a pretty decent relationship. I think they're great recruiters. Uh, I think they do a phenomenal job when they when they have kids on their campus. Uh, that's always uh, a battle, and and you know that when kids are going there to visit. I do think we we both identify the same players uh, from the same parts of the country, and and so you're you're going to battle when you go to recruit against the best 
teams in the country and, and they're good at what they do, uh, it, it's going to be like that. And, and Jordan was a, was a perfect example of that. And, uh, you know, the kids got there, there are kids, the elite players have some really good choices and, and those kids and those schools are all, they're all battling for those guys. Next up is Bill Rabinowitz from Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Kerry. How are you? Hi, Bill. Um, I want to ask you about Tommy Togiai and, and the impact that he's had on your defense. Uh, you know, that position is kind of a thankless one, but, but it's so important. What kind of a jump has he taken and how important has he been to the defense? Well, you know, I wasn't here last year, so I can't tell you it speak. Right clearly to the jump, I can tell you that we have had players like that. You know, B.B. Landers was like that. He's such an active force in the interior of the defense. Now, there are two different players. B.B. was quick as a cat, Tommy strong as an ox. But the thing that Tommy does is he hustles so hard uh, day in and day out at practice, uh, all, in the games. Uh, he just he just is relentless. And that's what I feel like he does in the middle of the defense. He's just a relentless force. And uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you don't stay on him, he, he's going to find himself at the ball. And uh, he's really, you know, b between the, the interior defensive linemen have just really done a really, really good job this year. We'll now go to Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Hey, how are you doing? Great. How are you, Tony? Good. I want to ask you about the other guy on the interior. Have you ever seen anything like what Haskell Gary has been through this year? And what's it been like for you to watch it as a coach? Yeah, not in my experience. You know, I, I, I wish I, I mean, I'm glad to be honest with you. I hope I never see it again. But for somebody to uh, be where he was in August uh, to where he is in December is it's a miracle. And I've said that before and I believe it. And it just continues to uh, be reproven every time he takes the field. He's very serious about what he does. I think he, I think he feels like, and he'd have to tell you, but I think he feels like he's got a new lease on life. Uh, I can tell you that my interactions with him uh, became more positive, more upbeat, happier, more hugging, more of all those kind of things. And and so for whatever whatever it is that caused that or sparked that in him, I mean, he is playing really, really well, really hard, you know. And he's he was a good technician. Uh, and, and, and Larry does such a great job with those guys, but he, he's eating it up, you know, and he, and, and he wants to be, he just wants to be great. And, and uh, I, I just love being around him. We'll now go to Steve Hellwagon from Bucknuts. Hey coach, Hi, congratulations Steve. on the success this season. And, uh, get it there. Uh, my question, I don't know how much you've gone back and watched the tape of this game. You weren't there obviously a year ago. But Ohio State did a great job of containing ATN, running the football, and a really good job with Lawrence and his wide receivers and tight ends. Where they beat Ohio State was uh, the quarterback run and the screen game to ATN. Uh, three touchdowns, long touchdowns out of those plays. I know it's all part of everything, and you can't stop everything, but how do you stop all four of those things in a game like this? And, and, and how aware do your guys have to be about – all the different ways they can attack you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. I don't, I don't think anybody stops them. I think you want to try to slow them down. You want to try to contain them. You want to try to make, you want to try to eliminate those big plays. They, they do it to everybody. Uh, their explosive tape is the longest tape you, that you've ever seen. Uh, I, think the, I think the running back is a fantastic player uh, in, in every phase of the game. He runs the ball inside. He runs the ball outside. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He catches the ball on the perimeter. Uh, you know, I think he's dynamic. Uh, obviously, the quarterback run, which shows up at this time of year, is is uh, important to their success. And uh, that's what that's what winning teams do. You know, they have a formula. Uh, they've got talent uh, across the board uh, from from uh, the numbers to the numbers. And so uh, if you if you went into a game and said, well, we're going to take this one thing away, they have plenty to beat you somewhere else. And so you have to prepare uh, for all of it and you have to play. Uh, you have to play a great game uh, uh, for four quarters uh, in order to have a chance at the end. Thanks. Next up, next up will be Jacob Bang from Buckeye Grove. Hey, Gary, how are you? Hi, Jacob. Great, thanks. Hey. Uh, going back to the interior on the defensive line, have you seen an extra pep in the step of Jonathan Cooper now that he finally gets to play Clemson? <laughs> I think I can tell you this, and it's it, 
the remarkable thing is to just watch how these kids have managed and handled uh, everything. But Coop is a flat out leader, um, you know, and and I was talking to him. We had a, we had kind of a walk through practice uh, the day after Christmas. And, and Coop says, coach, we need, we need to wear cleats. We need, I mean, he was just and he was right. And we did. And, and you just you just love that kind of leadership. Uh, he's he's. He's all in. He's pushed his chips into the middle of the pile for this game, and 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 I think we'll see Coop's best effort. Next, we'll go to Zachary Brazeler from New York Post. Coach, what with Sean? He, you know, we all know Sean was can only play a half last year. I know you weren't, you know, there last year, but could you just sense how motivated he is for this game? Well, I mean, it, 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 in many ways, I think the way that game finished or a big part of the way, the reason that Sean came back and Sean's passionate about about winning and he felt, um, I'm not going to say he felt responsible, but he felt, you know, shortchanged or whatever. I don't know what the right word is, Zachary, to be honest with you, but, uh, and he's been motivated all year and he, he's a great leader, but he's, you know, this this game obviously means a lot to him. He's, you know, He's prepared extremely well. He wants to go out and have a good performance. Uh, he wants to help us. He wants to help his team win, and that, that's the main thing. But uh, I, I it, there's no question that coming off the field at halftime or b before the halftime last year was very, very hard for him. Next, we'll go to Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com. Hey, Kerry, you, Hi, you and you and how you doing? You and other people have been talking about Etienne's versatility. When we talk to Clemson, they talk about your linebackers' versatility. I'm just curious when you guys moved those guys to the positions that they're in this year. Was it a matchup like this that was kind of in mind? And and how does this alignment of linebackers and the versatility that you guys have maybe help you match up against Etienne? Well, I think when you're going to play teams like this, and it's a great question, I think when you're going to play teams like this, you got to have speed on the field and you got to figure out a way to get fast guys out there playing uh, in, in the right areas. And, and for us, uh, you know, moving, moving Pete, uh, getting Barron on the field in a different capacity, having, having a kid like Justin Hilliard who can play all the spots and then that anchor in the middle, tough Borland. I mean, I just think that's, that versatility give, gives us uh, – it certainly gave us a great chance when guys were getting out, were out because of COVID, but it gives us flexibility. And I, and, and I agree with you that when you're going to play teams like this, um, you're going to need those kind of flexible players that can move around and do different things uh, during the course of the game to help you uh, try to win. And one last question, coach, I'm Brendan Gulick from Buckeyes Now. Hey, Kerry. Hi, Brendan. Hey, Haskell made a comment to us that he has spent a lot of time this year uh, I'm trying to learn more than just his job. He wants to know the coverages. He wants to know where certain guys are. He said it's helped him play more freely. That's a, that's a really mature thing to, to commit yourself to doing. How many other guys on your defense do you feel uh, have, have made the decision to, to try and learn more than just their position? And has that made you better as a unit? I think that some, some of them chose to do that. Guys like Haskell. Uh, Pete uh, got, uh, got, you know, certain players. And then some of them have had to do it just because all of a sudden you show up at practice and there's four guys that aren't going to be able to be there. So now you got to go play this spot and you got to know it. And the young guys have really learned that not necessarily because they, they want to, but because they have to. But I think the maturity of these kids that are looking forward to extending their career uh, uh, down the road, I remember having a conversation with Haskell about, three deep coverage versus two deep coverage. And why do you play this one? And why do you do that one? And, and he was really interested and, in, and in how that uh, might affect him on the defensive line. And I think you're right. It's a very mature way of looking at things. And I, I think the more guys on your defense that you have thinking along those lines, the better chance you have to have success.